Welcome in everyone to the heroes. <laughs> Sorry. Welcome in everyone to Region Challenger Bracket. My name is Bahamut. We find ourselves here on Infernal Shrines. We got We Take These in Region on the left and Region Retro on the right. If you're sitting at home wondering how we got to Infernal Shrines, I got you covered, friends. Home team this evening is going to be the members of We Take These. They lost the coin flipped, opting, uh, excuse me, the member of Region Retro opting for first pick priority as the winners. They ban out Battlefield and Dragonshire, Cursed Hollow and, and Braxis Hole that were banned out by We Take These. And Infernal Shrines will be the first map chosen by, the, by them. Shout out to uh, Muntons. He made the music in that intro for us. That is a very, very slick intro. I do love that quite a bit. Thank you so much. To buttons for that one. All right. Zul and uh, Joanna band on the left hand side. We have a Garrosh and an Ana band on the right. A Deathwing first pick on the side of Regen Retro looking for the big destroyer to come through. A lot of push power with that. A lot of good aggression on these camps, or excuse me, on these shrines. But an immediate grab onto the Grey Main and the Stukov as well for some zoning potential. And, um, you know, flailing swipe, you can, f you know, you can push back the enemy team. Obviously, Deathwing won't move, but maybe that allows you to open up a window or an avenue to then dive onto Deathwing. You're pushing the enemy team away with said flailing swipe. We'll see how that works out. Or it could be single target disengage with the um, massive shove. That's definitely always an option as well. Grayman Curse Bullet will be a definite at level 20 for them. Excuse me, at level 10. On the right hand side, though, they will grab themselves an ETC. Do we get a Anduin here very early, or do we get a. Ooh, it's actually going to be a Malfurion. So they're going to be looking for those roots. Uh, zoning roots are a big potential. Poke potential with them as well with the. Not Lunar Flare. Moon. Nope. I can't think of it off the top of my head. Either way, uh, they do have a lot of good poke potential. I think it's maybe no, it's not Moonflare. I can't, I can't remember it. They did a great job. I agree. I they they absolutely killed it with that intro. It's really really good. Sylvanas will be removed as they don't want to deal with the push power coming out from her as well. That would actually stack really well into their team. Their wave clear wouldn't be awful either because they could still grab some sort of mage like a Kalthos, a Jaina, a Gul'dan. All of those are up and available. Um, those are typically the prioritized. I would say Jaina and Kalthos prioritize a little bit more than Gul'dan just because of how they can scale with the regeneration globes as well as just their overall power in the later half of the game. Their power spikes are I think a lot more significant than a Gul'dan's. But a Leoric will be banned out as well, not wanting to deal with his damage over time or his percent base, excuse me, his percent base damage into the Deathwing with the um, Spectral Leech. Stukov though. Uh, we, we, we take these stomped me and the board team in NGS spam last night. Oh, you're looking for the, uh, for the, uh, you're looking for them to lose here. Lido, how's it going, bud? Good to see you. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I hope so everything's all right going for you. Rough beating of they let us win a, in a bonus game three. They almost beat us though with no talents. Dear Lord. Tyrael and Malthiel will be grabbed here. So that's going to be Malthiel in the solo lane into Deathwing, I would assume. That's that's some good aggression. We'll see. Oh, we'll try and focus on that one here and there. Uh, last two picks that are coming out. They will need some sort of mage. They're also going to need something... Uh, like a Hanzo Jaina wouldn't be bad. Hanzo can rip an arrow, sets up ETC. Jaina can still get the uh, Ring of Frost or she can go into Water Elemental. Also gives them good wave clear, gives them good poke. I, I actually really love a Hanzo, but it's actually going to be a Rainer and a Blaze. I wonder if the Deathwing is going to be rolling into the core four between the rotations between mid and bottom. I hope you're as well. I hope you're I hope you are as well. I am. I'm doing pretty good today. I was saying earlier that I, I felt a little uh, off on my, my 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 work work where I draft and stuff like that. I felt like I was falling behind, but I don't think it's actually as bad as I'm making out of my head. It's it's a big project and it's it's just a lot of changes that we're we're putting into it. So um, work was work was anxiety ridden. I would guess you could say it's not not that bad, but it was just like there's a little bit with that one. But we're casting, and I honest to God, this is all I care about doing, in a sense. It gets me through my work day. I enjoy doing this because I get to hang out with all of you, but that will be our draft for game number one and our final best of three of the evening. We will be seeing that Phoenix rounding things out. I don't think it's a planet cracker. 
I don't expect a planet cracker, but part of me is holding out for it a little bit. Like, I wouldn't mind having a planet cracker come through. That'd always be really cool as well. There's not a lot of good lockdown for it, so I think we're just going to get Purification Salvo realistically. Because that would probably be a better choice as well. Like, Purification Salvo, I think, is going to be way, way stronger into this enemy team than it would be if they were to be going into Planet Cracker, because they can just kind of sidestep that damage. <laughs> I hate that feeling. I hope, hope it smooths over soon. It's just the project right now. It's just it's one of those projects where, like, I just I feel like I can't get my footing right. Like, every time, like, I'm getting into it, just it feels like I'm messing up or something. I don't know. It's, it's weird. But it's just a little funk. It'll pass. We got games. This is going to be the fun part. On the left-hand side, we got We Take These. Roger's going to be on the Gray Main. We've got Mason Blaze on the, looks like the Stukov. Xenaris is going to be on the Malthiel. Uh, Trimmer is going to be on the Tyrael. And Infrared will be on the Phoenix. On the right-hand side, we got the members of Regen Retro. Zami Bar will be on the ETC. A Aeron is going to be on that Blaze. Uh, Meliodas. That's a good, that's a good, that's a, that's an anime reference right there is going to be on the uh, Malfurion. We've got Altanian on the Deathwing and Splash is going to be on that Rainer Pepper in the enemy team. They are going to be going into Exterminator at level one. So it's going to give them some faster shrine clear and they're going to be able to burn down uh, enemy waves and also just the enemy Punisher if they end up losing it a little bit faster as well. But... We are here, mid lane, power slide from ETC, connecting onto two. That's going to be a root out from Malfurion as well. For anyone that's wondering as well, we are in the Challenger bracket, which means the difference between Challenger versus Invitational. Invitational will be Nexus Gaming Series Divisions B, C, and D, whereas the Challenger bracket is going to be made up of the Heroes Lounge Division S members, uh, Nexus Gaming Series uh, Heroic Division, and, and Nexus Gaming Series Division A. If you want to find out more information on that, you can hit exclamation point regen. If you'd like to find out more about the brackets, you can hit exclamation point bracket. And if you'd like to donate, you can go to MV vgcharity.com slash tip, which I'll make a command for tomorrow. I did. I, th I thought for some, I don't know. I thought just the regular link would be enough and people would be like, oh yeah, donation tab, but uh, it's just clear if it takes you right to it. Either way, ETC First Blood will be going over to the side of We Take These as they continue to pressure out their bottom lane. Looks like they're going to grab themselves this camp as well to add on to that Malthiel rotating back into the top lane. They did go, no, they did not because I'm actually seeing them move very slow here. This is the this is the standard speed for a Malthio, which looks slow for some reason. I don't know why. Like a Malthio, I always expect to be blazing across the map because they do go into on a pale horse, but they will be going into something I don't see very often, which is Death's Reach. This is going to allow them to engage a little bit further and also maybe manipulate the fight and try and dive into the back line or maybe even dive towards one of their friendly members uh, to get out of a uh, hairy situation as that will be the Earth Shatter zoning back. It looks like the camp will be leashed as you, as you can see the, the health going back up on that one. They're going to turn around and steal that camp away and now they'll move over to their own and just grab that right there. When it comes to some of our level 1 questing talents, as to note, we do have the proc rock for ETC. They're going to be benefiting mostly from the rotations between mid to bottom to be able to grab those regeneration globes and Blaze will be going to the new habits at level one as well they only need 15 and they're going to be working their way through that fairly quickly already at five stacks out of said 15 necessary malfurion will be going down another kill in favor for the members of we take these and now they actually can look to maybe open a bottom lane pot, uh, pressure that up a little bit or they can make a quick rotation into mid and try and soft push into that lane so that way they have some advantage if they get the punisher but it looks like bottom lane will be the call as you know first punisher is not the most impactful but you can also see teams take a first punisher and go all the way to a keep front gate taking down a fort and that that right there is a huge advantage we'll see what happens with that one first shrine is going to be activatable in the next 30 seconds will be frozen punisher and it will be in mid lane as it is defended on both sides uh zedekis thank you for the follow i appreciate that friend glad you're enjoying the content you're seeing okay Sorry, I'm just I'm drinking some water before I know the inevitable team fight to pop off over this objective phase. Seven talent here is, is slowly coming in for both these sides, a little bit closer in the set if we take these, as they are going to be up a, I'd say, a sliver in experience, not a whole lot, probably like a heroic kill amount. Yeah, about 740, I would say, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit more from those minions and and, um, and structures, as well as, as well as mercenaries. Sorry, I know we have a fight breaking out. I'm just curious. Sorry, it is from mercenaries as well. Oh, this is going to be a dive towards the back line. Zami trying to back off to help the friendly members, actually making sure no one dives onto them as they can use that face melt to push them back. Six up on both sides, but seven talents here just about to come through in favor for the members of We Take These. Regen Retro still not too far behind, but you can see them clearing wave to try and pull that experience in their favor. 23 skeletal defenders on the bottom right. As you can count, will be over on the side of Regen Retro, but We Take These now surpassing with 24. Actually, it's, it's neck and neck at this point as they dive 
dive in with this Blaze Aaron trying to find a way into the back line. Malfeel's the first one to go down, and that's gonna be them pressuring out towards this enemy side. And you can see them, they're like, we just wanna get these last. We only need eight more. We only need eight more, as the minion wave was actually pulled in by Deathwing as well. And it seems like they're gonna set themselves up for a defensive posture. Infrared already behind that gate. Material actually gonna be going down to bottom lane to soak up, so they do have that seven talents here. But that that kill also yielded them the experience they needed to push them and even the match out on the side of Regen Retro. Punisher, Frozen will lock down the towers with those Frozen Novas that do explode. So once it jumps over, you'll see these circles appear. Those are those Frozen Novas that locks down the towers for, I believe, 2.5 seconds. So they will not be shooting for that duration, and that allows the enemy team to siege in further and more heavily. But look at this. Here's the thing that I really, really want to point out, because they did this well on the side of, of We Take These. They baited the Punisher because it jumps, and that's the, the bait as I'm talking about. They baited it towards the upper portion of this map. If you actually bait it down towards this lower portion, it, portion, it will focus on the well first, and that means your lane sustain is going to be mitigated immediately by the Punisher. And if the fight gets drawn out and you don't have that well to tap, or maybe you have another uh, objective phase in mid, or you just need to tap it, you won't have that opportunity. Opportunity. So it's a really big advantage to be able to keep that and pull it towards the upper portion further away from your well. And it's a little thing that you can take into your own game that really can benefit you quite a bit. We are at eight levels right now, so we're going to go ahead and cycle through the numbers as we do always do and uh, make sure that we see all of that information. Sorry. Um... Okay, sorry, I, I, I'm in a Discord channel and I realized, I was, I was like, wait, why am I seeing this? Okay, I'm in, I'm in Celexia's Discord right now and I was in the XCOM channel and I was just like, why are people from Regen posting about XCOM? And then I realized where I was. Okay, anyways, we have a dive out from the Grey Main as they're actually trying to get a burst onto Zami Bars, taking them down to about half health. You can actually see the experience coming in right now. I'm just trying to skim through it. We got about a 2,000 deficit in favor for the members of We Take These, but it's not that massive. 10 talent tiers will be, sh they actually 10 talent tiers should be up and available for both teams just as the objective phase uh, pops up in top and it will be a mortar punisher. So not the best in siege, but definitely does a lot of damage to hero heroes when it's brawling out. Deathwing taking flight in bottom lane did go into skyfall at level 70 to see those meteorites falling from the sky. Greymane diving out Roger looking for that last little bit of damage, but Aaron does manage to get behind the gate. Gonna go ahead and get some self-heal onto themselves. I'm just curious if they have well up and available. Not for another, uh, yeah, they, they just used it, so they're not gonna have that anytime soon. Actually, didn't know they they got the well. I just it, for some reason my brain didn't register it correctly. It looked like they were like, oh, I don't have well, so I'm just gonna go ahead and just and heal on the ground. But no, they 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 must have tapped it right there. And then uh, will be purification salvo for the phoenix as we were talking about that during the draft. Blaze did finish out the. Um, New habits at level one, so that does give them the self cleanse when they do pop the pyromania. Also, regeneration globes do give them a cooldown onto the pyromania on top of that. So they're gonna be looking to still grab those consistently as a nice slow and root comes out, or excuse me, just the lurking arm from Stukov with that weighted pustule as well. Really good combo onto that enemy member. And now we wait as they open up this mid lane further. It was surprising that they're still not prioritizing top. They actually do have the front gate and everything down. They could look to pressure that out further. Maybe look to play that aggressive, but it seems like they're just going to continue to so soak and rotate around as 10 talent tiers are up. And we do have our second Punisher of the game will be Mortar in top lane. I just, they're just chasing around right now. I'm just, I'm, I'm like, I'm watching and waiting. Okay. Also, finishing a glass of water really quickly. So top lane, Mortar Punisher will be spawned right there. Going to be having them clear this out really quickly. At least the initial 10. Same so is coming in here. I'm gonna pull away the talents really quickly. I'm just skimming through. ETC sitting at 13 stacks there. They need about seven more of those regeneration globes to be able to finish out the proc rock. Just so if anyone's wondering where they're currently sitting as we get into this. Majority of the phase still going over to the side of we take these. It looks like they're gonna clear out the wave just below them and step further forward. And this actually kind of looking for a bit of a flank. Uh, Malfield does have last rights that is up and available, looking for someone probably in that, that lower third of health before they proc that onto, onto them. This will be the shrine starting to go over onto the side of Regen Retro. They're zoning them away fairly effectively with this Deathwing ETC. Jet Propulsion from the Blaze coming in, Power Slide from ETC. That's going to be the sounds out as well. Purification Salvo coming out from the Phoenix. They're going to connect onto quite a few members as there was a Sanctification from the Tyrael as well during all of that. ETC does end up going down. That's going to be a dive onto Meliodas. They do find the counter kill onto Grey Main. Meliodas is able to jump into the bunker, but they still get picked off by Stukov. Stukov literally hit for what? 418 damage 
onto 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 the Malfurion, and they were just they just nope them into oblivion as they are going to be able to grab the second Punisher of the game on the side of we take these, and they'll be able to then push this in through top lane. As I noted beforehand, they do have the front gate and the well gone, so this should be top lane fort just uh, surrendered to the side of we take these, and they should be able to rush up and maybe uh, play into the keep front gate. Malfiel already rotating into mid lane signifies to me that they don't want to push with this too aggressive. They just want to try and get a little pressure onto that keep front gate, maybe poke onto the enemy mem enemy members. Maybe someone steps a little too far forward. Gray maining is coming. Oh my god, is going to be going into the bottom lane as well to make sure they're still soaking up. I'm going to pull up those 13 talent tiers. We can actually see the Punisher clearing out top lane. They're all going to split off and just rotate into mid. Seems like they weren't going to be trying to end off of that by any means, but they definitely were going to be making. They're going to be splitting the enemy team's attention because right now we have the vision. This is Mason Blaze vision, so they can see how many members are clearing a top lane. That's going to be four. We can count them on the mini map, and Blaze is showing down in this mid. So they're going to rotate Zanaris and grab this camp over here. Lurking arm coming out as well. They're going to dive onto Eren, and they're going to be popping bunker. You actually saw everyone start to back away in the assumption that they had it. Oh my god. 60-some health on Eren right there. A.A. Ron is able to get out with... Nope, no problem at all. Kami slap, Zerg slap, <laughs> Mother Russia cheek pat. Yeah, there you go. Next Punisher will be Arcane. We'll be in mid lane. We're going to be having Blaze clear out this top. We have Malfiel grabbing a camp for bottom lane, and it looks like they're going to try and open up mid even further. If they get this Punisher on the side of We Take These, they're going to be building more momentum, and they can be looking to go for a keep, maybe even step up into core, because I believe mm, the announcement should be in about 45 seconds or so for our next Punisher. And so they're just they're just adding pressure on the map. They don't need to play too aggressive. They actually could look for 16s. They're about a level away a little bit more than that. And if they're able to get 16s, this is going to be a difficult fight for the side of region retro, especially with the momentum they're building. You can see, I think there's some danger pinks coming out as the, the Raiders coming over here. They managed, ooh, actually look at this. They're setting up for a bush party. Sammy Bar comes over the wall, a curse bolt to the face. There's also going to be that holy ground from Tyrael that you saw right there that was blocking them from backing off. And now, and once they have Eldruin's Might, I want to click on Tyrael really quickly. What's Eldruin's Might cool down overall? I think it's 13 seconds. 12 seconds, I think it is. Either way, uh, they're going to be activating that. And you can see them once they activate it, they have that holy ground, which is going to zone them back away. Tyrael might be going for the cheeky uh, dive onto the point at the last second and steal it away with the holy ground. But now, power side, Moshpit coming out, flailing swipe, interrupting. That's going to be the purification cell from the. Phoenix as they find the kill on to Meliodas. Deathwing is going to be using the Molten Flame on the far end of that Altanian, taking a lot of damage. Last Rites, I think, went out. Might have gotten a stack right there. They, they, they've got two stacks. So they found some kills at some point. I missed it. AA are on trying to make their way out of here. That's going to be the speed boost from Tremor. They find the last auto onto them. Triple kill for none. Camp still grab for top. Camp and mid lane still pushing in. Camp and bottom lane still pushing in as well. This is triple threat coming through these lanes. I was wrong on the objective timer. Way wrong on that. I thought it was going to be a lot sooner. But either way, we will be seeing this mid lane opened up. Oh my god, the dive onto... Oh my god, the staggered death onto Rainer right there. As we take these, is continuing to pressure into mid lane. They're trying to open this up and prep for the next objective. Blaze down for five, Rainer down for 20. They're looking to get onto this core, excuse me, onto this keep. Root comes out from Malfurion. Tremor on the far side of this, but they still have Adruin's Might. They still have speed boost. They still have shielding. They still have, they actually don't have sanctification as to note. Uh, keep is taking about half its health right there. Um, maybe a little bit more. Caster Mass setting in. Top lane does have a double camp through there, and this is going to be Shrine activatable in 11 seconds. Everyone should be back up and able to fight over this, but here's the issue that I was talking about earlier. 17 to 14 when it comes to our levels. Without 16 talent tier, I doubt they're going to want to step into this. They're going to be looking to rotate around them. Actually, no, I think they're just going to turtle up and wait for waves to crash into them and hope that... hope that they can get near 16, but I don't think you're going to be finding a level here in the next 30 seconds or so. Control all deleted, yeah. You done messed up, A.A. Ron. <laughs> I know their name's Aaron, but I always think of the uh, Key and Peel skit where it just, just, I always think of that. Anyone's name that's Aaron is just, I'm sorry to every Aaron in the world because that's what my brain goes to and I'm sure they're sick of it. But 35 and rising when it comes to the Skeletal Defenders and we take these, takes the third Punisher of the game, not even going for the Regeneration Globes. They're like, we don't even care. We're going to push in. We're going to chase. I mean, Grayman, yeah, could have used them. If we're going to get a little nitpick, nitpicky, but they managed to grab a little bit of healing from that Stuke of Push, will spread around. And now, nine kills up, six struck. Oh, look at this. Six structures left, nine kills. Nice. Nice. Gotta find memes everywhere. 
Uh, either way, we are going to be going ahead and seeing them actually dive onto this Deathwing. The Punisher trying, they're trying to bait this towards the bottom lane. Looks like Punisher won't stick onto it. Mid lane keep goes down. They dive over to the core. They're actually going to end this right, or trying to end this. Power slide from ETC connects into quite a few. No Mosh Pit trigger. Mosh Pit actually goes to the far side of all of this. It doesn't connect just in time. Purification salvo goes out, but I think it was actually mitigated by the bunker completely. Punisher actually focusing on the splash over here on the right hand side. They're going to dive over onto Blaze, who does get cleansed. Unfortunately, you can't cleanse through all that silence, and they will be going down. It looks like the members of We Take These are going to take game number one. Punisher jumps over to the right hand side, padding its stats, and that will be game sanctification out as well. GG. Well played. Take your ass to O'Shag Hennessy's office. <laughs> Harkin, yes. God, I rewatched that when I first moved out. When I first moved out here, I, I rewatched that entire show and I was just like, this is so good. Like, it's such a good show. Alrighty. Well, that's game one. It's starting to get cold in the house again, of course, because the heat hasn't been on for like four hours. Sorry, I'm putting a sweater back on. I had to stand up. Also, I need to stretch my legs really quickly. Okay, I've been sitting in this chair for, well, since 6 a.m., so it's it's 8 o'clock now, so we've been going for 14 hours in this chair. Yeah, that's 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 a long time for this butt to be here. Um, so they're telling me what they want. Do I have... Let me find... Where is Mason Bla... Oh, all right, well, we got a lobby invite. Pull it away. There we go. <laughs> they were like, they were telling me stuff, and I was like, oh, I don't know how to, I don't know who to organize this with. Okay, there we go, so we got that. That score is updated. Um, I had to throw my sweater back on because it is like 60 degrees in the house now. This was won by them. We are going to where it is going to be that map with that team. That, that, that. All right. Readies are ready to go. We just got to get uh, the button push. That's it. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. Game Peel are amazing. I know. I I, I just... They... So good. They certainly took that. They definitely did. Oh, my God. Give me time to catch my breath. I'm, I'm, I'm like, legit sitting back in my chair just like, ah, yes. Hey, bud. We're almost done. We'll go cuddle on the couch soon. Watch... I don't know what. I wonder if we're going to see an appearance by Jay Quallen. Towers. <laughs>
As Regen Retro is the losing team, they can either opt for first pick or map pick priority, opting for first pick for game number two, meaning that map pick goes back over to the side of we take these and they are going to be choosing Towers of Doom for game number two. Sorry about all of that. I, dr I once again, like I, I, I always say this and I just, I've never learned my lesson. I was chugging water before we got into this. Yes, Stark, healer in chat, exclamation point healer. If you, if you're in chat and you're, and you're like, Bahamut, what are you talking about? And you've never seen the healer clip, go watch that YouTube link that Stark just triggered from the, from uh, Nightbot. Either way. Okay, so Zul on a band on the left, uh, Sylvanas Greyman on the right. Li Ming will be immediately grabbed for the members of Regen Retro looking to get themselves some burst and some poke early in this game. Now, they could actually go into a, a, a noob rack on the side of Regen Retro or even on the side of We Take These. I know web wrap can be essentially countered by Disintegrate, but Legion of Beetles is actually a good way to block a lot of the incoming damage from uh, Li Ming, and you can also get the spell armor on those, but instead they're going to be going for a Joanna and a Rainer to start things out. Good poke pressure coming out from Rainer, sustained damage. They've also got the Hyperion for Siege. They've got the Rainer's Raider for uh, in single target sustained damage if they want to go into that. And Joan is able to rip that Bless Shield and set up some big single target blowups, which we saw in the last game really, really worked out for them on the side of We Take These. So they're going to have to find a way to dismantle that as a variant will be grabbed here. I don't think we get Twin Blades of Fury. Like, as much as we would love the meme, realistically, I think we're looking at a taunt because it's going to be taunt with roots with a combo from Li Ming. That's going to be your core burst. You're going to be following that up with maybe a Blaze. Maybe uh, you have Hanzo in there as well. Something to maybe go in with the variant to dive. Like, a Malthia wouldn't be bad. Greymane obviously being banned out will not be an option. But uh, Maiev is actually an option as well. Maiev would actually work out for them fairly well. Good poke resets from the uh fan of knives they actually ban out the deathwing not wanting to deal with that because well no gray main and malthiel i wouldn't say didn't get a whole lot of value but i'd say gray main was the was did a lot more into the deathwing than the malthiel might have at least that's how it seemed uh what is this tournament well if you'd like to find out exclamation point regen will give you all the information and then exclamation point bracket will break it all down for you clang bang clang how you doing friend i hope you're having a wonderful night we are uh in game number two of our final best of three is Uther will be banned out, not wanting to deal with. I'm a little surprised by that. Like, I didn't. I wasn't expecting Uther to pop up here whatsoever. Like, I didn't think Uther was going to be a priority even in this game. I mean, Rainer Jane is always a strong combo, unless you don't want to go into Ace in the Hole and you don't care about getting the slow value, but I, I think Jane is still good because her poke potential is massive. Rhaegar going to be grabbed. They might be considering a Bloodlust here. It's definitely possible, and Sister Healing is really, really powerful, though. There you go, yeah. Thank you, Kaleo. Thank, thank you, Langaria. Thank you for pop, popping that up. Basically, there's two brackets, 32 teams. Two. Basically, there's there's two rounds of 16, which is what we're in right now. Two teams competing, or teams competing for a hundred dollar uh, battle net card. I guess it's the support with two cleanses by level ten. That's true. With every death comes on change is upon us. That's a good point as well. Hanzo and Dahaka will be grabbed, so poke potential from Hanzo will be big. Dahaka maneuverability around the map is going to be great for them as well. Um, Typically, top and bot, excuse me, uh, solo lane double soaks often on this map. So Dahaka has the might. We, uh, we might see enhanced agility from Dahaka to be able to speed things up. Leork is probably going to be able to just uh, rotate easily, but that is going to be a chromy. Something we don't see very often, but definitely a strong hero as they do have the artillery, the range damage, and the poke for these uh, alter phases. I. I kind of, I want to say that I like Regen Retro's draft a lot more, but this Chromie is an outlier for me. Definitely a major outlier, the Chromie. We'll have to see. We will have to see. Take it back to Bandit and I as we are going to be loading on into what could potentially be our final game of the night. No, Rob, Varian, gotta be the main tank, let me drink. <laughs> no, Rob, Varian, gotta be the, yeah. I mean, we could see Twin Blades of Fury. I doubt it, though. You're welcome, Clang Bang Clang. Else the solo inner kind of maybe vary. Oh, that's possible. Prepare Let's get into the game and find out what these teams do. We take these on the left-hand side, trying to close it out in 2-0 fashion. Mason Blaze on the Rhaegar. Xenaris is going to be on the Leoric. Roger on the Rainer. Infrared on the Chromian. Tremor on the Joanna. 
On the right hand side, we got the members of Regen Retro trying to keep themselves alive in this round of 16. Also to note, this is single elimination. There's no lower bracket to fall into. Altanian's gonna be on the Malfiri, and Aaron is, oh, excuse me, Aaron is gonna be on the uh, Dahaka. Splash will be on the Hanzo. Zambi Bar's on the Varian, and Meliodas on the Li Ming. Watch it, watch the pronunciation of that be completely not Meliodas, and I'm just being a weeb and saying it the way that I know it from the anime TV show. Either way, we do have initial engagement. Uh, Varian, what are you going at level one? Eh, overpower. Typically, High King's Quest is the jam when you go Twin Blades of Fury, but I mean, you could go overpower. I, ex I still expect this to be taunt, 100% taunt. Colossal Smash is an option, but I, I personally, I, I don't see it. Like, I, I think Taunt is going to have so much more setup for the, for this team. So Xenaris is going to be going into the top lane. Um, Phaetian to death is going to be actually their level one right there. So it's a little bit more sustain in the lane up against that Dahaka. As we can actually see on the minimap, they are going to be up there matching them. Probably should be seeing them maybe make some rotation. Yes, yeah, so you can actually see Leoric already doing it. They're going to be going to double rotations. This will be a little bit slower technically for Leoric, and that's why you're seeing a little help I think coming out from the friendly team. Once they get level four, they'll have the uh, they'll have the option to grab Neil Peasants, which is a good way to get extra damage onto minions, mercenaries, and monsters. Basically, anything that isn't a hero or a boss will be able to. Um... Yeah, yeah, because bosses are elite camps, anyways, um, and monsters are considered. Uh, uh, objective phase type things like um, Punishers or Immortals like those those are considered monsters. I do believe So right now rotation into bottom lane They actually stole away the camp on the right and grabbed their own on the left We take these actually with six sappers coming in the first grouping gonna be going into the top tower Gonna be trying to trigger these ones in as well. Gonna be focusing onto the gate, which is the rough go. Uh, typically, you, you wish to have the gate down so they, that way they focus on the towers, but it seems like with Rainer and friends, they're gonna be able to burn that down and open up this front gate and bottom lane. Now, the reason I wanted to harp on level four as well as Leoric doing double soak, all that stuff, blah, 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 is because bottom lane is one of the most important lanes on this map. You can feed in the double sappers as we just saw, and you can also get extra shots. It also makes objective phases more difficult for the enemy team. Next, our, excuse me, our first objective phase at the two minute third, Oh my god. At the 2 minute 30, you'll get the announcement. At 3 minutes, it's up and available. It'll be over here. For the enemy team to rotate onto that objective phase, if, they, if they're if they able to convert that bell tower over in favor for we take these, is going to be through the sapper camp or directly through the middle of the map, which is just, it's it's one of those things where it's just like, it's, it's predictable and it's more difficult for said team. So that's why you're seeing them really make sure that no one's going to be going down in this bottom lane. I, I pulled away the talents thinking they were going to step into each other, but not going to be the case. Double altar phase will be coming up. And uh, let's see, I'm just skimming through talents. Uh, Dahaka did go into the tissue regeneration at level one, so no enhanced agility for them. Gonna be just more tanky right there. Um, what did Chromie go? Time troubles, so it's gonna be the armor a buff or armor reduction. So if you hit a friendly member with the uh, with the time trap, you'll get give them twenty. If you hit an enemy hero, you'll be reducing it by twenty. So a good talent right there. But they have that in the bush on the left hand side. I think it's more of a retreat tactic, maybe to turn around a fight. Infrared sidestepping the arcane orb from Li Ming. We actually have the left and the right hand side gonna be traded out to Haka. Did burrow down into this bottom lane. Penetrating round comes out. The tongue drag does not connect as they brush. Excuse me, burrow into the ground right there, popping their essence as well. Mason Blaze is going to be forcing back Meliodas as we are going to be having a time trap over towards the top portion. There's the time stop. You can see the 20 armor reduction as they get the double sand blast into them. Did go for once again the first time at level 1, meaning that they are going to be looking for that secondary uh, echo. And they... And they're, oh my god, sorry, they have to get 40 stacks for the secondary echo. I was watching the minimap waiting for this engagement to happen here. Zambi bars will be going down. That was first blood of the game. This has been a fairly aggressive back and forth between these two teams, but it seems like with a variant going down, they're going to give this over. Altanian may be poking out one more time with Moonfire. Is it Moonfire? It is. I couldn't remember in draft, but then immediately it popped in my head when I wanted to say it in the game. Deadbolts, what's up? How you doing, friend? Sorry, I forgot to post the Hawaiian time. Uh, so tonight's stream started at, uh, three o'clock your time. <laughs> I hope you're doing all right. I hope everything's all right for you and I hope you're staying safe. Seven's up on both sides. Uh, looking through these talents, pretty standard, I'd say across the board. And I mean, I, I feel like I see this fairly often. Hanzo actually going to be going for spell power at level seven right there. 
taunt on Devarian. A lot of big blow up. Cleanse comes out from the Rhaegar as well. They're going to turn this around with Joanna stepping into the back line. We do not have 10 talents just yet, so we're waiting. So, I mean, the only one that technically has their 10 talent is going to be Chromian Varian. Varian actually able to back out right there. We're going to cycle through some of the other numbers right now as we are approaching those tens. Another objective phase will be popping up in the uh, mid position of the map. And once again, it's going to be that Vi to try and get this, this bottom lane bell tower down and convert it over. You hear that laugh across the map as that will be five minutes into the game, signifying the boss is up and available. Dahaka actually walking through right there. You can see that now on the mini map in that upper position as Dahaka is making sure they're soaking up everything. Leork is pushing into that top lane. Time trap onto Hanzo as the storm bolt. Oh, that was actually a really good time stop to, to just mitigate the Stormbow damage and just going to be going back and forth in top lane. You can see that Neil Peasant's value as they angle for it and yeah, it's, that's easily clearing out the wave so much quicker for them. But now they need to rotate down here to try and engage over this altar. 10 talent tier not going to be in favor for either team and I don't think they're going to get the trickle experience in just in time. Dahaka going into top but I would assume this Dahaka does have brush stock as yes, they do have that brush stock up and available. Now we will be seeing, actually Dahaka's health is all threes. Sorry, I want to. It's just all threes. I'm sorry. That was just something I noticed really quickly. I was like, huh, look at that. Yeah, hi, Baha. Uh, social distancing is is easy for me. Yeah. I mean, I work from home and I cast video games, so I, I only left my house like four times a week before. Now I just don't. I got all of you, so thank you. I recently found out that they have a name for my lifestyle. It's called Quarantine. Oh my god, train wreck. They're looking for for 10 talent tier over this though. They're, they're delaying things out on purpose because I think they want to fight with that talent tier advantage. Leoric is going to be getting the Spectral Leech right there, interrupting Aaron, but I don't think they have another interrupt. They might have to give this over unless Leoric really steps into this. No, they give that over and that's going to be shots raining out against them on the side. Uh, oh no, they're going to be brawling out now. They get 10 talent tier and imme immediately lose their Joanna. They're up the advantage and they end up trading right there. They need to make something happen. Entomb onto two. That's a huge Entomb. Meliodas trying to get some damage. That will be Hanzo using the agility over the wall. And so they do find two, giving over their Joanna. So they, they give over four core shots to their own, evening things up to 32 to 32. But now they could look to pressure up this bottom even further as Splash takes a little bit of burst from that Rainer as well. Yeah, like, for me, I, I've worked from home for almost three years. Like, in May, like mid-May, I believe, is going to be three exact years for me. Um, from when I started working from home for the company I work for now. I'm actually, like, yesterday, I think it was, was, like, my, my four-year anniversary at the company, which is, I just realized, I was like, oh, look at that, I've been here for four years. Um, but, yeah, the, the only difference is I can't go to the bar on Fridays and go to happy hour, and I can't go snowboarding really good. Oh my god, everything is so good right there. Tongue drag, arrow, cleanse, everything was so on point from these teams. It's going to be the tranquility coming out from the from the from Altania's. They're trying to keep the friendly team alive. There's gonna be a temporal loop. John is the first one to go down once again. Uh, that will be uh, this is deja vu. We have the Malfurion getting picked off. Rhaegar does end up going down. Xenaris is gonna get the slow. That will be Chromie finishing out her level one quest. This is gonna be a two for two. And uh, they picked off that Varian right there as the single altar phase will be up and available in the bottom lane. Dahaka is gonna be just getting one more wave in mid, trying to push them up closer in that experience department. Hanzo trying to clear out the one sapper left, manages to do so. Meliodas going to be hearthing back. I expect this just to be given over to the side of we take these, but I don't think regen retro is going to be going down that easy. Going to throw a time trap over there. Rainer going to be sitting in the bush, I think, for a penetrating round. Hanzo might try and get like a scatter arrow here, but it's very, very risky. Xenaris going for the initial channel. Splash, yeah, literally Roger steps up into Splash. Just like, I got a, I have an interrupt for this. And Splash is going to get melted by the artillery from infrared. And now shield glare coming out. That's going to be a condemn, a huge into as Melidos is going to be blinking away. There's going to be a Bloodlust from the Rhaegar. There's going to be a Taunt out from the Varian as well. Zamibar is trying to make their way up. Bless Shield is ripped as well. And they find a double kill. Excuse me, triple kill, may I correct myself, as they will be able to get the fort in bottom lane as well. And now they can feed Sappers in through this bottom lane. They have five potential shots. Uh, we don't see on the minimap yet our next bell tower phase. It could be double, could be triple. Going to be a double. It's going to be in these two left and these uh, top left and right as the bottom lane sapper camp will be attempted to be uh, shoved through, but the variant just now coming back will be trying to defend against this. Is consistently going for Joanna the play? It seems like it. I've worked from home for part of the time already, and my team was split between here in Portland, Oregon, and New York, so it's easy to transition for. Yeah. I do miss the other stuff and my wife and son. Okay, well, we're having a pause, so there's that. <laughs> Just not even paying attention. Uh, so we have one player lagging. Okay. I do miss other stuff, though. My wife and my son would usually be out and about, but not anymore. Yeah. No Sonic Arrow cost for Hanzo.
I was too earlier. I feel you. Okay. So it's not just them. Um, yeah. Thanks for hanging out, everyone. If you're enjoying the content you're seeing, my name is Baham and I do a lot of casting. Typically, I am streaming Sunday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, because Mondays I'm not streaming on my channel. I'm over on the Heroes Hearth channel casting with McIntyre for the uh, Heroes Hearth Celebrity Clash League in-house matches. It's a best of five series where some players play for fun and some uh, little bit of prize pools on the line for them to, to, to vie over. So I hope you all hang out and uh, are ready for those ones. Or swing by for all those ones. Sorry, my, it's, it's, we've been casting for like four hours and 19 minutes, unfortunately. Let me update you in a minute. Um... So I'm starting to get a little lethargic myself. My apologies, everyone. We're just waiting for the ready from uh, Regen Retro. All right, we're back into it. A pause heavy this, a pause heavy night this evening, like. All right, so they're going to be trying to feed these sappers in once again. They do have uh, Joan actually stepping into the death zone, trying to open up an avenue for them to walk in. Looks like they're going to be able to deny that. Also to note, before the pause happened, Chromie did finish once again the first time in the last battle, so that means they have the extra echo. That's where you're going to see you're going to see a triple sandblast consistently coming out from her. Uh, the cleanse right there. Hello. Chon comes out onto Mason Blaze. That's actually going to be Altanian triggering the... Um, Tranquility as well to try and keep the friendly team alive, but double altar phase will be coming up in the top right and left. They could look to just burn this down on the right hand side. Camp to be grabbed once again. This uh, this is a little risky because here's the thing: they could have positioned and they could have been already up here in position to maybe gank the enemy team as they rotated in on this. But I think realistically they're going to be just getting the five shots and looking to feed three sappers in through bottom lane. Shield glare maybe coming out from Tremor just to uh, pause things a little bit or slow things down. But that'll be three to five when it comes to shots, twenty nine to twenty three when it comes to core health. But look at this: you you see them all? They're all immediately like, we gotta go into bottom lane. We need to make sure that these sappers do not come through in favor for the opposing side that would take them down to 20 health if the caster math is serving me correct. Also, they have to get all three over for that to happen, but still, let's see what happens. Temporal loop on the very end. They actually went into the into, into the charge as well at level at level 10 or the uh, Warbringer at level 10. So I was waiting. I was like, I was like, okay, where's the parry with the, you know, the, the, um, the protection status, by the way, and I didn't see it. And I was like, oh, okay, we went charge at level 10. Interesting. Also going to be going to shatter throw. Going to get rid of some shielding right there, right? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you get out of this one here, Dahaka, bud. That Entomb was really, really good. Li Ming did... No, she didn't. Okay, I thought she went into um, the increased range uh, on the orb because it seemed like it went a little far, but I think they just got max range on that one. Um, but shield bonus basic attacks against heroes deal up to 200% with shields. Yeah, there you go. Okay. 2,426 extra damage to their shields. Dear lord. Mid lane bell tower goes down. Oh my god, top lane as well? We take these as just on a roll this evening as they are looking to go for triple bell towers. Uh, or, uh, steal away triple bell towers as a triple phase will be coming up. Sapper camp is going to be grabbed by Infrared and Roger over there on the top portion of your screen. And now, ooh, taunt onto Tremor. Root's going to be there as well. I don't think they have an iron. It's going to get a rip the bless shield as well. They're not going to be able to find anything outside. Well, actually, Li Ming is going to be caught by the temporal loop. Tries to blink away. Meliodos will be going down. Varian dives in with the Warbringer. There's going to be a uh, narrow arrow from that Hanzo, and they are able to uh, still find the kill onto the on, uh, onto the Jaina. Oh my god. Onto the Joanna, but they get the counter kill onto the Varian and the Li Ming. Now, six shots will rain out. This will be 12 points of core damage, but they're looking to make that way more. They're looking to go for both in top lane. Yeah. They're looking for 18 damage. Roger just gonna go casually just like walk by Leorg and just pop Hyperion and go for the bell tower in top. This is ridiculous. This is absolutely ridiculous. Because now they have consistent shots coming out. Isolation went out into Zenaris. That's going to be in an in, uh, in Entomb as well, as they're going to throw a lot of damage. The Orc is going to take a whole lot themselves, as this is going a little sideways. The longer they delay this out, though, that's going to be working out for them. Here's the thing, though. On the left-hand side, there is still a Bell Tower that they can grab. And if they just get that one Bell Tower... Sorry, the one shot raining in. Boop. Um, no one's grabbing this still. This is, this is going to be it. Like, if they get two more shots from the cores, that's going to be it. 
two health. There's no way they can convert this. That's going to be Malfurion going down as, as well as Zami Bars. The GGs are literally already called. We have a 13 minute, 13 and a half minute game on, dear, just, we take these, take